I attended uh, Manhattan Science High School and I am ACS class of 2009. And I worked in Queens College under the guidance of Blue Della Ray, uh, And my presentation is uh, a comparative genome protein analysis of microorganisms that live in varied temperatures. And I work in the proteomics bioinformatics lab. So I'm going to start out. Uh, here's my overview of my presentation. I'm going to explain some terms and concepts for those who don't know what I'm working with uh, to give you a background information. And then I'm going to dwell into my summer project with some good tools, procedures, and data. So what is bioinformatics? Bioinformatics is a merge of two disciplines. Computer science meets bioinformatics. Bioinformatics is a use of computers application to search, use information, store data such as gene, nucleic acid, and proteins. And here is a visual representation of a, basically a generalization of bioinformatics. So for example, a scientist can uh, sequence an organism genome and that sequence would be stored into computers and it could be manipulated and with computational tools it could be manipulated and used for comparison, um, finding patterns, or certain type of genes within the genome. So, proteome bioinformatics. Proteomics is a large study scale study of proteins, particularly their structures and functions. And here's another uh, general uh, presentation. I'm working at this level. I'm not going to explain how DNA transcribes into RNA into proteins, but I'm working at this microbiology level. And proteins is the entire set of proteins expressed by genome, cell, tissue, or organism. And I am working on the entire set of proteins expressed by a genome. Like genome, the word genome also is, the word genome is the entire nucleic acid of the organism. So the organism I worked with are extremophiles, which are organisms adapted to living in conditions of extreme, such as temperature, pressure, or chemical concentration. Before that, can you go back to the previous slide and explain that for us? This, um, you mean this visual presentation? Um, well, it's. I don't, this is biology 101. Um, you know you have DNA, but it's basically double helix, and they are encoded with four different types of nucleic acid, I believe, A, T, G, C, and they, um, I don't really recall how the process works, but DNA is transcribed into RNA, which is a single strand, and um, you can see there's a U right here. Um, totally, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't really remember how this process actually works. You can always, um, two lines yeah, and then every three letters encodes a protein, and which are, and there are 20 different proteins. <coughs> so, so files live in harsh temperatures, and I mean, harsh conditions, and we judge habits based on what we consider extreme for human existence. Uh, suffix file, P H I L E, means lovers of, and extreme, extreme means extreme. So they're like lovers of extreme, and they prefer or they survive well in these harsh conditions that we would not be able to survive in. Um, the four categories of extremophiles I work with are psychophiles, mesophiles, thermophiles, and hyperthermophiles. The numbers here are in Celsius, and they live and survive well within these, uh, these temperatures. Uh, I work with 24 extremophiles, and these are the, there are six in each category. The purpose of um, studying these extremophiles is that 
they have these enzymes, and enzymes are basically proteins, and they are they seem to work. They are stable and they function optimally in drastically drastically different growth temperatures. Um, researchers want to find out how these um, enzymes can still function in extreme temperatures because enzymes, if they change shape, they lose their function. And also, several of the DNA such protein sequences are typically homologous, which means they're similar among all the tumophiles that are there are 40 to 85% 80 sequence identity, and that is a significant number among all extremophiles. Because that is related to how, because that might give researchers or scientists clues on how they could survive these uh, harsh conditions. <coughs> and one application why my lab study extremophile is dishwashing agents. These enzymes, like I mentioned before, are proteins, and they work in high they work in high temperatures, and they could work in low temperatures. And in future study, along with the market and science community, they might come up with possibly more effective uh, dishwashing agents. So. And enzymes are catalysts in life chemical reactions, and chemical reactions are cellular respiration, photosynthesis, or digestion, and they're necessary for life process. So here's my summer uh, project objectives. I have to learn basic Pro, which is a computer program language, which I will be more in depth in my next slide, and how to use uh, SSH, which is Secure Shell. It's a portal, it allows me to work, log into my home computer, to, it allows me to log in from home onto Queen's College computer database where I can run my program and save my information onto Queen's College uh, computer databases. So it acts as a, a backup. And I don't have to download any necessary program to run Perl, but that, that falls in a different um, category. And I have to count mono and dye pairs of amino acids in protein sequences of 24 extremophiles files and gather and organize data. And the procedures are uh, organized simply. All I, have to, uh, I have to download extremophiles files proteomes in .faa format. It's just an extension. You could always open it with a text file. And I log into National Center of Biotechnology and Information, GenBank, to retrieve the entire proteome of the extremophile. <laughs> and I created a computer program that would count mono and dye pair. And generate Excel charts for organization of data. So I'm going to go more depth in how I count, but it's literally what it is. Um, the tools I use are just everyday items, the internet, computer, and any software application relevant to this research, text, Excel, Word, and Secure Shell. And the program manual I use is Perl, which is basically a programming language. This is just an example of what Perl looks like. It looks daunting, but um, I only learned the basics of Perl, and I didn't get really in depth. And it's using many computer systems, Linux, Windows, and Mac. So you could run Perl in any operating system. And Perl has many bioinformatics functions, and it can manipulate complex data. There are other languages used in uh, used for bioinformatics, but it's a matter of personal preference. And the way I count amino acids is literally counting. So this is just an example of what I have to do or what I have to what kind of computer code I have to write. So this is an example of a protein sequence. There are seven at a line. And I just have mono means one, so I have to count how many uh, amino acids uh, proteins are, I mean A's are. So there's seven A's, and when I, write, when I run the script, it prints out seven. But the way my professor wants to count for a double pair, we need a dye pair, it's six pairs. So I have to write a script where it counts the first two, but it overlaps. 
and it ends up with the last pair. So there are six pairs.